movies or books? Which is better? For me, it's books, obviously. If you could see the movie or read the book and you could only do one, which one would you do? And normally I don't get excited about movies that are based on books because, you know, I like imagining what's happening in my own mind and use my own imagination. But there is one movie that I'm quite excited about because it's based on what I consider a sleeper hit. It's a great coming of age story for young readers if they want to learn about what it was like to live in the Middle Ages. It's about a young girl in medieval times who just wants to throw dung at her friends and she just wants to find love with someone who still has all their teeth. So if you like a little bit of medieval feminism and Lena Dunham style humor and blogs before the printing press was invented, you might enjoy Catherine Call Birdie by Karen Cushman, which is also now a movie that's out on Amazon Prime. Not sponsored, but I plan to watch it sometime soon. Now, before we get started on this book, I have to tell you, I was very excited to buy a print copy of this book again. And so I thought, well, you know, let's go see what the new print of the book looks like. And uh, I'm not normally a snob, but um, well, here we go. This particular cover does not inspire me. <laughs> you done this book dirty. And I'm not talking Middle Ages peasant dirty, like we don't wash our hair because we think it might drive us mad at some point. This book deserves so much more than whatever this is. If we look at the original cover, um, it's a beautiful depiction of, you know, kind of what you think medieval art might look like and it's very thoughtfully put out and this is not actually even the only cover of the book there was a reprint a couple of times that had really beautiful covers and i would have liked any of those and there's nothing wrong with you know an image from the movie but i mean why didn't they just use the movie poster that was available which actually looks really good so amazon please <laughs> Don't let your interns choose book covers. Choose something that, you know, maybe would make people love the book a little bit more and uh, not, uh, not represent like uh, airplane arms. This book is not about girls running through fields um, trying to gain velocity. Now, before we get to the actual plot of the book, you might be interested in some background information that might help you read the book a little bit better. This book is set in 13th century England or the year 1290. It takes about a year for the plot to resolve itself, so it's written from September to September. Now, the central focus of the book is around the fact that Bertie has just turned 14 years of age, which means she is eligible to be married off by her parents without her consent to whoever is the highest bidder. Because once you're considered an adult in medieval times, and not even that much of an adult, maybe just into puberty, you were considered ready to marry. So it could be as early as 12 for young men and 14 for young girls. And as Bertie herself will point out during the book, getting sold off without even knowing many of the times who you're getting married to, it's kind of mega icky by today's standards. Now, in terms of how the world operated in medieval England, almost everyone was exclusively Christian. And while there were Jews that lived there and thrived there after the Norman invasion, uh, they started being treated with a lot of suspicion and eventually they were kicked out of England, which was kind of, eh. Medieval England had a very strict hierarchy. So at the top, you had the kings and queens and nobles who formed a royal court and to the side of them, you had a religious class that told them how the world works as well as how to stay in God's favor. So those are things like monks and nuns and priests and cardinals. Now there's also a layer of what I would call middle management who watched over the lands that the king owned and sort of, you know, kept everything up to snuff. Then there was a class sort of right at the bottom who kind of kept all of society running. What you would call a regular peasant, someone who worked the land. There were different kinds of people who grew up learning a trade or a skill. And some of these skills were very hard to learn. So you know, you usually spent your whole life doing it. And those people were definitely closer to the bottom and closer to the top. Today, you might think some of those tradespeople actually do really well in life these days, and they might actually be kind of closer to the middle. There was food, there was trade, there was commerce, there was all these things that are really important to keep a society running. And Bertie's father was one of these uh, middle management landlords who also used to be a knight. Just in general, the Middle Ages was a fascinating time with so much history and so much to learn. I couldn't possibly cover it all in one video or 10 videos. So I really encourage you, if you're interested more in the Middle Ages, uh, the author, Karen Cushman, 
actually gives a really good overview of different kinds of books that can help you learn lots more about the Middle Ages in the back of the book. Now, on to the review. So when I was a kid, like a million years ago, I picked up this book because I thought it had an interesting cover, and also it was a Newbery Award winning book. Newbery has a pretty strong track record for being some of my favorite young reader books. I generally find I really enjoyed them, and I often learned a lot. They were often edutainment for me when I was younger. We didn't have iPads back then. So right off the bat when the book starts, we get a great opening line, and I'll just read it to you. September 12th. I'm commanded to write an account of my days. I am bit by fleas and plagued by family. That is all there is to say. And this is just such an excellent piece of writing because you can already tell exactly the kind of person that Bertie is, exactly all of her life problems as a young girl in the Middle Ages, and you get a sense that her life is not easy, but also that she's perhaps a bit dramatic. As you can imagine, for a young girl who's headstrong and has a lot of ideas about how she wants to live her own life, the idea of being married off to someone who's really old, which happened all the time, to someone who maybe is not that good looking and maybe not a good person, which also happened all the time, was definitely not in her plans. And Bertie is smart enough to know that she is being packaged off to whoever gives her father the best deal, but she's not really ready to go down without a fight. So she makes it her mission to become as undesirable as possible to any of the male suitors that come around trying to woo her attention. The fun thing, and I especially credit the author for this, it was blogging before blogging even existed. All these journal entries we think of now would be almost like little tweets that she would send out into the universe. Hard to tell that this was written before a lot of the internet even existed. Honestly, Birdie would probably be an amazing Twitter personality just sending out her daily thoughts on what she thinks about the pigs in the barn that day. And most of what she's concerned about are very mundane day-to-day -day things whether it's her talking about the next new festival that's happening at the village, a religious feast day, or her complaining about her family trying to constantly put her to work. And she's not the kind of person who really enjoys all the typical womanly things that she's supposed to enjoy. So embroidering and sewing and, you know, being a good, obedient daughter does not really interest her. She's a headstrong young woman with a lot of thoughts about her future and wanting to be free. But if we can say anything about Bertie, it's that she's absolutely a family-oriented individual, and you can tell how much she loves the people around her, even if they drive her up the wall day in and day out. And she tells us, more or less in her own words, where she ranks everyone. There's her favorite, Edward, her brother the monk, her mother, who wants her to be ladylike and obedient, her nurse that she's known since childhood, her father who is both her mortal enemy and someone she cares about deeply, and the bottom of the totem pole is probably her brother Robert, who I think would be a dude bro by today's standards. Now the main topic about this book is marriage and what marriage is like in the Middle Ages, specifically around the time 1290, which was, you know, kind of right smack in the middle of the Middle Ages. Marriages were for alliances. And that meant that someone was getting a little more wealth and someone was getting married off or into another family for political reasons. And as you can imagine, this meant that women had the least power often in these dealings. They really wanted to try and improve their standing if they were anything other than the lowest of the low. In the case of Bertie, who is the daughter of a lower ranking knight, she is obviously going to be married off for political reasons that suits her father. And this is sort of how lower nobles started to amass kind of like more power as they grew in land, as they grew in resources. And then sort of you can see how all of this led to the War of the Roses over time. And, you know, eventually which led to the books they're based on, Game of Thrones. So I think there's some truth to the idea, and I think there's something really interesting to the idea that, you know, political marriages that are for political convenience actually end up having really bad results. Now, there are some other minor themes that are discussed in this book. So one of them was about women and their danger of childbirth and dying from childbirth. Life expectancy was much shorter then. So generally speaking, people tried to speed up the process that now today I think we think life has different phases and we kind of let it go a little slower because we generally have more time. Why? Because we have better health care. What makes Birdie such an interesting narrator in this book is she's a strong-willed young woman in medieval society 
just trying to spread her wings because she's trying to find freedom in a system that absolutely does not reward freedom, especially in the way that we think about freedom today. In fact, most of the rewards of medieval life came from living in community. Another reason that I just like love this book is just talking about the central theme of belonging. And I love coming of age stories where they really think about as a young person, where do I belong? And Bertie asks the question of where she belongs as a young woman, what can she do and what sort of life should she lead? She recognizes that her life is unfair, partially because of her position, but also partially because she's a woman and not a man. So she doesn't get to necessarily choose the occupations that she wants to be. Although she does come up with a list of occupations she thinks maybe she could be. And half the fun of this book is of learning about what Birdie likes and doesn't like. I think in the end, all that Birdie wanted to be is at least someone who's just not a woman stuck at home doing chores. Because that to her seemed kind of like what we used to think of as the 1950s prison of a woman staying at home and that's her place and that's her role. For Birdie, that's not what she wants. She wants to go and do things that boys get to do or men get to do. And again, even though Birdie wants freedom so bad, it's interesting to think about today about how much freedom we have. I think today that we have the opposite problem. We almost have too much freedom. And young people today have pressures to look so perfect when in reality, most of you are just growing up and trying to figure out how not to be awkward. So how do you grow up and become the person you think you're supposed to be? Birdie's answer in the book was to talk to other women that she considered, if not role models, at least interesting, and people who have done things with their lives, about how to be a woman in the Middle Ages and still find freedom in her own way. Find out who you want to be by finding out who other people are in your world. Because when I was a teenager, I didn't even know who I wanted to be back then. And I think sometimes that I'm, you know, still figuring it out. To say that you're fine when you're not. I also think because of the way that this book is written, another central theme is about reading, education, and the power of writing. Birdie starts off her journaling as an exercise to get her out of doing other chores that she doesn't want to do, but it slowly becomes something that helps her process her own feelings and her own thoughts about what's going on around her. So if you're new to having a journal or a diary and you're a young person, I highly recommend you just jot down some of your thoughts while you're young because some of the things you will see and reflect upon when you're older will be so funny to you. It's just a gift you can give yourself in the future. So if you can take anything from this book, I would take away that there can sometimes be unexpected people in your life that can teach you how to be the kind of person you wanna be in the world. Do you have any role models that have shaped your life for the better? Let me know down in the comments below. This book comes highly recommended to me for young adults or young teens who are still learning about how the world works. But I think this is a great read for adults as well, whether you're a history buff or if you just want a good laugh, it's a really light read. Like, subscribe, and share for more. That's all for me this week. Stay curious, stay reading.